Come with me and my two children as we explore the Powerhouse Museum, which is in Sydney, Australia, and you'll see how I interpret the museum exhibits. The Powerhouse Museum is a fantastic place to take children. It's inexpensive, and there are plenty of exhibits there that children just love. When we visited, there was this fantastic Wiggles exhibition, and that alone was well worth the entry fee. This whole video was shot on the very expensive Apple iPhone 5S, and I'm finding that it's a very versatile little video camera to have in your pocket. Well, I don't do comedy very often, but I'm hoping that this video will give you some laughs. Well, today I'm going to the Powerhouse Museum. Haven't been here for a long time. My daughter came here on a school excursion. When I was a kid, I used to call it the Push Button Museum, because she used to push buttons. I wonder if the buttons are still there today. We'll take a look. You ready to go in? Yeah. Let's go in. Let's go. What do you want to see? It's more than cinema. Okay. Is there a game exhibit on as well? Um, I think so. I think. Oh my god. Can you see trains? Oh my goodness. We're in this gaming exhibition, but they told us no cameras, so there's all these Gestapo staff going around looking for people using cameras like me. So I can't take any footage in here, or else I'd be in big, big trouble. And guess what my daughter's playing? Minecraft, but I can't show you because we can't show the gameplay, can we, dear? No. Hey, I think we found Emily, didn't we? Yeah. Is that Emily? It looked like Emily, doesn't it? But I think it's pulling Annie and Clarabelle by the looks of it. That's a bit weird. But Emily pulling Annie and Clarabelle. There's a shot for the train fans. Wow, that's quite a spring and that's quite a brake pad. And there's Annie and Clarabelle and something tucked up the back there. Oh, look at that. Back in the days when things were made right. And that's a nice little coupler. Well, that one there was first class, that one there is second class with a couple of heads passing by, and that one there is third class. That's my sort of wagon. <laughs> I don't know where they're taking me now. My daughter seems to have a plan for where to go in this place. Oh, don't you love glass lifts? Aren't they so exotic? Yeah. Um, we moved into the new building in 1988. Remember the good old days when things were on a much grander scale? Look at that. Remember when stuff looked like this? Don't you wish we could go back to those quality days? Sadly we can't. Sadly these days everything's cheap and nasty. And look, this is like the old cinema. Peekaboo, it's very dark in here, isn't it? You know, I've never worked out why they've made museums so dark. I'm not quite sure what's going on. It's very eerie sometimes when you're in these dark cavernous museums. Well, I found a bit of light and the children have found some of the play. Look at the crowds here. Whoa, there's all these kids going crazy. <laughs> Are you going to play anything? No. Oh, thanks. How about you going to play? No. Well, this is what the kids walked away from. I don't know why. Look at this, even got a spooky doll. Hello, I'm the doll at the Prairie Museum and I'm totally haunted. I'm going to smash stuff up. What's this thing you found here? Minecraft. It's all like Minecraft art and stuff, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a bit sort of. I suppose in the future we won't have, you know, Wait. masterpieces on the in the galleries. We're gonna have stuff it. like this. I found it. This is the stuff which will be worth millions I in the future. It. How about that? Yeah. With Minecraft, you can do absolutely anything. Oh, we're going down to the depths and darknesses in this museum. Just had a major family drama. My son got scared by this fake spider web, so my daughter's had to help him down. No, he's still scared. Come on, it's okay. It's okay. There's no spiders, it's just fake web. It's fake. Look, it's fake. Look at that. Even Daddy can touch it. See? What hurt? No, he won't get past that. He's on the run back up. Oh, wow, this is an amazing Beatles exhibition. What do you reckon, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to talk quick here. I used to collect Beatles merchandise, so I know some of this stuff is fairly pricey. I've got one of those. I've got a bit of that. But I tell you what, you need a lot of money to collect this stuff. And I gave up because of the cost of it. Come on, kids, they're dragging behind. Daddy's taking the lead here. Where are you going? I think they're looking at the kids down there dancing. But there's music song to get a... It's a One Direction song. One Direction, quick, keep talking or else I get a DMCA. We can't have that music on this video. Ah! Oh, this is looking more like the museum. I remember all the old machinery and stuff. Oh, yeah. 
This is like the old push button museum, if you can remember back to the good old days. I think my daughter's found one of the push buttons. What's it some sort of steam thing? Wow! It's steam! It's steam like the good old days. You can push the button here and things, things work. Whoa! That's just mind blowing! You can push this button here. Oh, come on! That's what I want to see! This is what museums are all about, pushing buttons and making things work. I can't help myself, let's do another one. Come on, fly my baby, fly! Woo! Ooh, lots of nice stuff in here. What's that? I think they're old, what are they, printing presses or something? I'm only just making this up, I'm sure I'll be corrected if I'm totally wrong. And what have we got here? Ooh, like a peekaboo show, what can you see in there? I hope it's not something naughty. Who's in there, Mickey Mouse? I don't know. Huh? I don't know if I can see it. I'll probably get a DMC if I go in there. Oh, what's in there? I can't see. I can't see. Well, that's a fire engine. I hope I'm right there. And that's some sort of old traction engine. It's horribly dark in here. We need more of that. We need more light. And the light on my phone is not really helping at all. Oh, children, you don't touch things like this because you might get your fingers don't caught in there. Oh, oh, you might get your fingers caught in there. This is a don't, do not touch sign. Do not touch. Yeah. Well, whatever you don't touch, I'm always doing this. That's good old daddy for you. But I like the stuff like that. That's what we want to see museums. But boy, oh boy, I tell you what. They must be running out of power here. We need more light to see stuff. Oh, looks like we found something tangible again. Isn't it funny? Kids love the tangible stuff. They love to work stuff. Because that's how it used to be back in the good old days. Oh, look at that. Pumping water. Yeah. Faster! Not too fast, you'll blow your piffy valve. You know, I'm excited. This is what the Powerhouse Museum is all about. It's all about pushing buttons. It's all about tangible stuff. It's all about touchy-feely. It's all about pulling levers. It's all about having fun. What's that? Some medieval weight loss machine, is it? Yeah, Lift four kilos and lose half a kilo along the way. Whoa! Crank away. That's it. Come on, you can do it. Oh, be strong. Okay. Yeah, I'll do it. Need a bit of a... Up she goes. Well, this is one of the main large rooms here at the Pear House Museum. There's all sorts of things. There's trams. There's another old steamy over there. Some sort of horse-drawn thing over there. There's a big space there of nothing. There's a flying boat. A Catalina flying boat. I know a little bit about that from when I was much younger, but I won't go into detail now. And there's... Trying to work out a way to get down there, apart from the obvious one, just jumping off, but we'll find a set of stairs somewhere. Oh, we're going past small stuff. That was an old, um, like, roundabout thing. Everything back in the good old days, you know. Look at that. You don't see stuff like that anymore, if you could see it. Oh, thank you, Mr. Werner von Braun, for your brilliance in rocket design. We're back at that really uh, amazing glass lift. Let's do the lift again. Yeah! yeah. Which one are we choosing? One. Level one. Going down. I don't think the old days when people used to drive this for you and tell you what was at each floor. Remember those days? Yeah. I wasn't there in those days. Oh, I was. I'm old. Hey, Dad, there's another space robot. Uh, lost in space rabbit, I believe. I wonder if that's authentic. It looks authentic to me. It looks a bit like Darren from Good Game. It was a pretty cool robot in its day, but that Dr. Smith was a pretty evil dude, wasn't he? I'm about to show you something really top secret. It's where they shoot all the Mars footage. Remember that movie Capricorn 1 where it was all about the fake, the fake moon landings? Well, this is where they fake the Mars landers. Believe me, trust me. <laughs> okay, the secret's out, guys. This is where they shoot all that fake Mars footage. Look at that. But it's given away once you see a uh, pillar in the middle of shot. Oh, dear. Well, what have you found here? You found some sort of, what is it? Some sort of robot? Wow, we need one of those in the kitchen, I think, to do all the work, don't we? That looks pretty cool. I like that. It's another touchy-feely thing. The kids are on the buttons. Look at that. We need more touchy-feely button things, don't we? There we go. There's proof that there is intelligent life apart from us. And it's an old one. You can do the old button thing. The kids are loving the buttons here. Yay! I remember the good old days when, well, bicycles were bicycles, nice and tall. And you had, well, one big wheel and one big one. You giving up on that one? Yeah. Oh, come on, be a sport. Hello, you can do. do it. Look, a train. Don't change the subject like that, my dear. Okay. Is it Douglas, is it? It looks a bit like Douglas. Well, my son that. said it was Gordon. You think it's Gordon, do you? Is that Gordon or is it Douglas? Is it Gordon? 
What? We can ride in the oh, I don't know. What do you reckon? It could be. It's, if it's Douglas, it could be Donald or Douglas, I suppose. Well, back in the good old days of putting numbers on things, they also had great big hooks and nice big hoses. Don't you love it? And I think the children have gone up to hop inside this one. This one you can actually physically get into. That one says to me, climb on train. And this is for the train fans there. That probably means something to you. It probably means absolutely nothing to me. Back in the day when stuff was, well, Sydney made. Got well, we're up here got and it's actually a feasible thing you can play with. There's some sort of lever here. Every train's got a lever. Got and it's also got push this buttons. other stuff here. It's got push buttons. Wow. Whistles. It's got a little fire down there. A fake fire, of course. But it's got all the things that, well, steam trains have. There's one of those for people who get off on that. Look, I can make it work if I do that with my camera. Oh, look at that. What's that? Is that stop? And that's go? It sort of depends what country you're in, I think. Okay, let's read the signs that way. Trespassers will be paid 20 pounds. I don't know, the children have crawled up here. What have you found here? Hey, wow, we found like old toys or something. Ooh. And what else have we got? A bit of a window. Oh, wow. This is why he's getting so excited. Wow, these are old toy trains. These look fantastic. Whoa. Very nice. Well, the rail fans will know about that. I think it says it's Hornby. I hope they're right. They usually are right in places like this. It looks amazing, that thing. Wow. Oh, there's another nice specimen. I quite like that one. Who does it remind you of that one? I think it's Henry. Henry? Yeah. Mm, maybe, maybe not. Who do you think that one is, Henry? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. I always thought the Titanic had four tunnels, but there's a whole bunch of boats here. I suppose you're in the trains, you're probably in the boats as well. Oh, and there's these really nice uh, model aircraft as well. It's like stuff from the good old days. It's just more and more, but if you keep going around, it just never seems to stop. There's a few are up there, but they're not that well illuminated. My little uh, light isn't coming on, so that's all I can show you. Oh, uh, back in the good old days, it was all done manually. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. What do you see? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's tell me that, what do you see? What do you see? Whoa! Oh, it's a chichin. I wonder why he's getting excited. Wow, this is really nice. It's really, it looks like Wow, oh, they've shrunk the, this is the 3801. It, it does like exist. Gordon. It's come back, but it's come back as a much smaller, smaller model. model. Oh no! I think that German boiler fit out just made it tiny. There's this gentleman called Robert Goddard, who many people say is the father of modern rocketry, and he is a model of one of his early designs and up the back there is a much more impressive rocket engine and my daughter. Oh that looks like the sort of thing you'd strap into your car and make it go a whole lot faster. Oh, I've been at the Kennedy Space Center over in Florida many years ago and it had engines like this. It's very dark in here isn't it? Ooh, imagine being there when it lit up. And my children are telling me they're astronauts now and there's like a nose of a space shuttle here. That's all it's left to space shuttles these days. They're sort of uh, cut them up and they send them around the world. Well, not really, I just say anything to make stuff up. And in here we're going to another dark zone. And there's a couple of very important satellites, replicas of satellites up there in the ceiling. Maybe you know the names of them, maybe you don't. And there's a nice um, Russian thing. The audience will know exactly what that is. I um, got that up on the Russian space stuff. Actually, I quite like the look of that one as well. And there's a rocket there. There's another one you can strap onto your car if I get the right shot there. That one there, perfect to strap on the back of your car. And there's a better picture of that rocket. What is it? A Bristol Aerojet. Sounds English to me. Ah uh, yes, even in space, you need to have a number two. What's this? Some sort of mission control thing, is it? Yep. Yeah. Right, okay. It reminds me of Space 1999. Remember Space 1999 it had panels on the wall like that? That's what it looks like to me. Oh, there's a spaceman there. He's flagging space. Oh, very scary, isn't it, being a spaceman? Well, my daughter's found one of her favourite places in here. The touch, taste, and smell, and we're into the dark zone again. Oh, it does smell in here. It smells quite nice. Oh, that's sort of weird, isn't it? Wow. Oh, that's very, very freaky. You like that one? Doing some slow motion. I don't know how it's going to turn out.
This is another exercise machine to see if you can make electricity. Go for it. What we should do is have one of these connected up to the computer to play Minecraft. So every time you play Minecraft, you've got to do this. Come on, we've got the red lights flashing. What else have we got going? We've got the headlights almost going. Almost going. Come on, keep, keep pedaling. Faster, faster, faster. I'm out of gas. Oh, come on. You can do it. Or else I'll have to get up there and do it. Okay, here we go. Get those lights going. That's it. Oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> come on. Imagine if it was Minecraft, you'd be pedaling 100 miles an hour. What does it say? Look, but please touch. And this thing here tells you how electrifying you are. Are you creating the volts there, my dear? Yes, sir. Looks like it. It's like the, you know, the similar metals thing. You remember learning that at school? Have you learned it at school? I think. Oh, I think I did, but I've totally forgotten it all. So what do farmers do when they're really bored? They make machines like this. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm so excited. I've got to take a selfie right now. Ooh. We're lurking in the darkness here and thank goodness for the light on the camera. There's this thing called the chocolate machine. My daughter came here on an excursion, didn't you? You use yeah, this? I want to use it. Are you making a chocolate? This is fantastic. So we're going to see if we can get some of this on camera. Well, up there is sort of the guts of this machine. I don't exactly know how it works or where the chocolates come from. I think it's educational. It tells you about cocoa and stuff. And we're waiting for a chocolate the story here. Back yeah. when I was oh, come on. We can't wait all day. Wait, you have to get the story in the right order so we can try each chocolate. Are you sure a chocolate's going to appear? Yes, yeah, I will. I'm sure. Any minute now. There's oh! Whoa! Whoa, we got it. It smells whoa, whoa. like chocolate. Don't drop it. It looks like chocolate. Oh, it, it does. tastes like It does give out some chocolate. I told you. What are they little Hershey kisses or something? Are they? Let me reach in there and get it. It's, it's like a little Hershey's kiss. Like, yum. Oh, I remember the old periodic table if you did chemistry at school, but there's one person who I think illustrated the periodic table in the best way, and that was a gentleman called Carl Sagan in the TV show Cosmos. He represented all these uh, elements as their real thing. It's a fantastic thing. Just, just Google Carl Sagan and the periodic table, and you'll get the very best uh, analysis of what that actually looks like, and it might make some sense to you, because every, everyone else who tries to show that, it's as bland and as boring as that. I think the real trick in life is turning this one here into that one there. Didn't Carl Sagan say stuff like this? Star stuff. That stuff there is star stuff. In the future, we'll all be wearing stuff like this because we'll be on a toxic planet. Okay, what have we found here? It's like one of those things where you've got to do a bit of exercise to make things work. Anything going to happen here for you? I don't think so. Oh yeah, we've got stuff working. Keep pedaling, keep pedaling. Just imagine it was Minecraft. Just imagine this is a game of Minecraft. Keep pedaling. And this machine here is the future for human beings. We're going to be scanned, 3D scanners, going to be replicas of us made. And this is like an attempt to show the future, I believe. And this is one of these things in the future, there'll be no power. So we're going to have to have holes in the roof where the sun comes down. We're going to have to use little mirrors and stuff to bounce light around and the light can be bounced around and put through mirrors and things that can be sent all the way down there to light up well really dark areas of your house like this place has got. Oh don't we love robots. Look oh, they're coming to attack us. There's heaps of robots here. These would be fantastic to collect. I know lots of people like collecting them. There's a really strange robot up the back there. But um yeah robots don't you love them? And there's even some more here on the other side. I can't get enough of these guys. Spooky, spooky robots, they're taking over the world, I'm sure of it. Oh, they're running, they're running, I think they, they said the Wiggles was up here somewhere. In the dark depths of the Powerhouse Museum. Wow, there's this sort of really kooky environment where you walk on that, walk on that again. Have a walk on that, weird. It's like, um, computerized water, I don't understand. It looks really freaky to me. Oh, it keeps splashing around. It's a sort of splash you can do without getting wet. Yeah. Okay, this will be swimming in the future. This will be the what you do when you're swimming and you're not getting wet. And also you're not drowning. That's the most important thing here. Hey, go in there with your sister. Quick, run around the back. Run around in No, go inside. Go in the back and you'll be in there too. You'll be in the game. That's really freaky because that, um, that hat sort of adding to the illusion there. Oh, he's going in. But where is he? I can't see him. There he is! He's in the game!
You come out of there this minute, okay? I can see you. Oh, I think I see how it works. It's a green screen sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's how the green screen. And there's like a camera there. And then there's like a picture of, hey, there's a picture of me. And look, I've got Kiss. I've got Kiss on the phone. <laughs> the secret's out. <laughs> the secret's out. Wow, that's sort of cool, isn't it? That's cool and it's sort of um, freaking me out. I've got to look up there and look in the camera. There you go. Wow, there's this very, very cute, I think it's Engage Thomas set here. I don't know, it's sort of like an interactive thing where you make things turn. There's a windmill up there. But look at that Thomas one, that looks amazing. And look at the layout in general, it looks totally amazing. Wow, Thomas is up and running. He wasn't running before, but now he's working. That's amazing. He's cute. Look at him go, he is cute. I think it's, I think it's Engage. I hope I'm right. Which one did you press to make him go? Which one is it? Yes, that one there. Oh, there he goes. Yeah. That's funny, we came here before and he wasn't running, but now he's fine. Oh, here's a really great old architectural model of the Sydney Opera House. It's back in the early design that Utsun had when it had much flatter um, shells. And it's sort of sad, the Opera House, because what we have today was really never finished off to what the original designer had planned. And that's a much, much longer story, probably worthy of a much, much longer video. I think this model here is great because this is representative of, of Australia. We are very good at half doing things. There's half the Opera House done and the other half is, well, a catastrophe. And there's also this really great cutaway of the Opera House here. And there's one little mystery to the Opera House as to why one of the shells is so tall. And it's funny, it's tall for a reason, but the reason why it's tall was pulled out. And in essence, that shell doesn't have to be that tall, but do you know the story behind the staging and the crane that used to be inside there in the original design? Like I said, it's a story worthy of another video. Where else in the world would you find an exhibition by the Beatles and the Wiggles in the same place? Let's do it. I don't know if we're going to be able to take much video because I do think there'll be wiggly music. Oh, I'll tell you what, this first thing is creeping me out. Look at those eyes there. Oh, I think those eyes are moving. Did you ever know there's a wiggle that was a secret one called the wire wiggle? Well, there he is. Oh, wow. You can make some fruit salad. Yummy, yummy. Fruit salad. Yummy, yummy. Oh wow, wow, look at this, you can colour it in and they're having heaps of fun. This is one of those touchy-feely things, the kids love the touchy-feely stuff. Whoa, it's like Fruit Ninja Wiggles, look at that. Whoa, Fruit Ninja Wiggles, whoa. Oh my goodness, that thing is freaking me out. Look, it's Alien Jeff, he was from another planet, whoa. This one's for you, Pixie Licks, I know you like guitars, but look at this guitar here. It looks fairly well used, it says the Wiggles on the fretboard. And I've got a funny feeling, I think that's an Australian guitar company. Oh, this Wiggles exhibition at the Powerhouse Museum is fantastic. I hope it's a permanent fixture, but there's one little bit of advice I've got for you. If you want to get into something which isn't that expensive to collect at the moment, but would be a fantastic investment, would be to collect Wiggles toys. Down at my local charity shop, I see lots of these toys going through, but I also see them in people's garage sales. And if you live in Australia, you'll probably have access to some of the earlier toys that were in this franchise. I'm pretty certain that in the future, the Wiggles toys, which are based on those four original members, will be worth some serious money to the savvy toy collector. You know, I thought it was just worth the entry just to come and look at the Wiggles display, and the Powerhouse Museum is actually a very affordable little day out. Especially if you make a comparison between the entry to Taronga Park Zoo versus the Powerhouse Museum. And what was nice, there was enough of the old push buttons that I remembered as a kid still in the museum. How's your lunch going, guys? God? No? Come on, what are you having? Oh look, it's a rat's coffin. Here in Australia we call these rat's coffins because you don't know what's inside. It's a rat's coffin, okay? There's some chips there. Daddy can't eat the chippies. There's one of those knockoff Thomas bags. I told you I liked one of them. That's what we brought out some extra food with. What are you eating? Chips and rat's coffin. Yay! I'm trying this here. The Pepsi Next. I think this is good for you. I think it's like a low... 30% less sugar. Well, doesn't mean it's got must be, there's all the sugar in there. Tell you a fact. Yeah. When I went to Vietnam one year and it was New Year's yeah. and there was flowers, they made flowers, used flowers to make a big Pepsi thing. It was like Pepsi Freak when I went to Vietnam. Oh, really? Okay. I didn't know about that. But this must have sugar in it. It says 30% 
less sugar. It's probably still, well, probably still bad for you because I think sugar's the evil in all this. And that's the evil as well. I was just reading the nutritional stuff here. It says 7.4 grams per 100 grams, whereas normal Coca-Cola is what about 10 grams of sugar per 100 grams. So I think 7.4 is still a bit too much, to be honest. I'm um, probably not going to drink the rest of that for that fact. Hey, what are you doing there? Checking the rats coffin. You're checking for rats? Yeah, you got to check those for rats. Anything in oh there? Oh my god! No. <laughs> just eat it. Eat it, Freddy, eat it. Hey, look, we've got friendly powerhouse museum pigeons here too. I bet you they're well fed. They look pretty chubby. Oh no, that's going to bring more. He's feeding the pigeons. You know what I call pigeons? I call them the rats of the air. Here they come. Here they come, the rats of the air. What's this place here? What is it? His favourite show is on TV. Like some sort of... What's he mean? Weird, weird thing to ball. You going down that stairway there? Yep. Oh, where's that one going to go? Goodness knows where. Hey, look at that. It's more of those fake photos from another planet. They would have got those photos from that little exhibition that we saw upstairs. Isn't that right? It's all fake. Everything we look at is fake. Trust me. <laughs> I know. I know what I'm looking at. Australia. What have you found here? Oh, look at that. Are they aliens? <laughs> well, that's spam in the can. And what that thing there is, and I should probably tell you because it's well, sort of half interesting, it's a replica of the Soyuz re-entry module. Would you like to come down from outer space in that, that thing there? Do you think it looks safe? Well, they say it is safe. It's probably got a lot of people back to Earth over its years. Did you know back in the good old days, Australia actually had its own spaceport? And there's a picture of it there. Well, what do we have these days? Well, nothing like that. I don't know what's going on in this place, but um, we don't have rockets like that anymore. Full steam ahead, Captain! And back in the good old days, we used to have this really good tram network in Sydney, but no more, and unfortunately they have <laughs> just become uh, museum pieces like you see here. Hey, Dad! Yes! Okay, go! go. <laughs> you guys are crazy. You've gone cro museum mad. You've gone museum mad. Keep moving, keep moving. Well, that's a really lovely model or cutaway model of some very fancy um, steam engine there. I don't know what the kids are doing in the background. Um, the audience can tell me what that one is. I'm sure there's someone out there who will know exactly what that is. Now I know where all those stolen signs go to. They come to the museum here and they get stuck in a glass cabinet. Well, we found some more push button stuff. What have you found here? Push button, and what does it do? Lights up the house. Oh, lights up the house. Oh, we must be in the uh, eco friendly area of the museum. That's why there's more lights. Well, what are you cooking up today? Cheeseburger Happy Meal. Cheeseburger Happy Meal? Um, no, we're not doing those. We're doing salads, I'm sorry. Isn't Never. that right? We're having, okay. we're having a salad Pop with uh, salads chicken and bites. Bin. Pop those salads in the bin. In the bin they go. Just remember, children, to reduce, recycle, and uh, reuse. In the future, we're going to have giant beakers to collect water from the roofs of our houses. Oh, what's this we found? There's a toilet here. Are you going to check for number twos in there? Um, has, uh, it, has it been sealed down? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness for that, because you know what happens when there's toilets like that hanging about, people push use buttons. them. Oh, I found all push button things about having a long hot shower. You know all about having a long hot shower, don't um, you? You, need, you can only have three yeah. minutes. You three minutes. Three minutes. I get. Well, let's practice that at home, eh? 19. You know, I don't get it. We're in the, like, the energy saving, you know, conservation, you know, save the planet part of the museum, and it's got the most light. Wouldn't this be using the most power? Isn't that just a total contradiction? Can someone work this out for me? Why is it so? And this next thing is the latest design in compact vehicles. Look at that one there. It doesn't have any wheels. It just sort of skids down the road as a lump of steel. I mean, this is really bizarre. This is some sort of thing showing how Sydney Harbour, if we have like uh, rising sea levels, that part of Sydney will be inundated by children. Uh, two very large children. How weird is that? 
And there's more evidence that in Australia we only do things by half. There's half a harbour bridge. You know, today, I was, this is the cap I was wearing. It's actually a knockoff Minecraft cap, and I think I only paid $10 for that at the markets. I noticed in the shop here, because there's all these goodies game-related at the powerhouse. This is $40. I, that one's $40. But, but it's totally worth it, because, I mean, like, but it's totally $40 worth it. $40 versus, hold what? that one up. $10. $10. $10. Put them side by side. Yeah, this, $40. Is this is much darker. $10. There's the, uh, the price tag. Whoa. Well, that was the fun at the powerhouse museum. I had a lot of fun in there. I know the children had a lot of fun. Ended up buying some toys on the way out. Probably too many. I'll get in trouble again. But they're happy. Let's hear that whistle. Choo choo. Anyway, if you do have a chance, come down to the powerhouse museum. It is a lot of fun. It's not that expensive. Not like visiting the zoo here, at Tronga Zoo. I found it a lot of fun. And the computer games exibition was good as well. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. A bit of a different one from me. And bye for bye now. Now.